Pras Gaming has been on a roll this year, launching a bunch of value-oriented gaming mice with good performance. In this review we take a look at the GXT170 Heron. The Heron has a symmetrical design while also being a right-handed mouse from the factory. Its main features are the RGB illumination and the unique way in its functionality. Also, this mouse is one of the few that has a proximity sensor integrated into the shell. The proximity sensor is directly linked to, to the RGB illumination of the mice, the whole LED system to be exact. What does this mean to be, to, to be precise? Well, the lights stay on when you are using the mouse and it works fantastic. However, this proximity sensor is nothing more than a gimmick with no real use. The problem with this system is that in dark moments, if you don't touch the mouse, the LED LEDs are off and you can essentially not see where the mouse is, so you get the disadvantages of having a non-RGB mouse while also having an RGB mouse. Moving on in what makes the Hero a good gaming mice is taking it apart. As you can see, the outer shell is made out of two plastic parts, the white cover is made to better diffuse and blend the colors of the LEDs. Opening up the mouse, inside we can see that the main switches are made by Kale and they are the blue models, and also they sound like this. The optical sensor is a ADNS5110, capable of up to 7000 dpi and has a pulling rate of up to 1000 Hz. The main processing unit is made by Holtec and the whole internal structure of the mice is solid. There are no soldering mistakes being done on the internal PCBs and everything feels tight and carefully placed inside. Now that we have established what makes the, the Heron tick, let's move on to the gaming aspect of this mouse. And for this we are going to play the latest installment of the Far Cry series is the Far Cry 5. In terms of sensor performance, the ADNS5110 is good enough for casual gaming, however, the testing of quick movements and accuracy is adequate to say the least. The 360 degrees rotation shows that the mouse has some sort of acceleration integrated into itself, thus the mouse did not land in the same spot all the time. The lift of distance is around the 7mm mark, which is not great but not a major inconvenience for the casual gamer. In fact, while playing Far Cry 5, I've been bothered by the high LOD at least twice, the most tracking with the mouse but when I was moving around the target. All in all, the overall gaming experience with the Heron is good. The mouse has a great shape that is comfortable even after long periods of usage. At one point, I have been playing using the Heron for about 3 hours straight. Moving on, the cable of the mouse has no slipping whatsoever and it has a total length of 1.8 meters, which is plenty. The USB connector is gold though and has a plastic cap protecting it. However, the cap is not attached to the cable in any way, so losing it is going to be very easy. The mouse can be configured using the driver offered by Trust on their website. This piece of software offers plenty of customizing options with an intuitive interface. By default, you can set up 5 profiles, set up the DPI settings starting from 500 DPI and maxing out at over 7000 DPI. Lower, you can adjust the pulling rate and scrolling speeds. The software is split into 4 windows. The light window offers up to 5 different lightning modes and of course the option to enable or disable the proximity sensor integrated into the RGB system of the mouse. The background window offers basic functionality and options, just assignment of the buttons and saving them into your own profile. The third and final window of this software is also the gimmicky part of it. This mouse offer its, offers its own achievement or trophy system. Each trophy is offer, offered by completing different tasks, such as pressing the right switch over 1000 times. As a conclusion, the Trust GXT170 Heron is a good value gaming mouse. The performance is ga in games is good and the used optical sensor made by Avago is excellent for its price range, doing its job in every scenario possible. One inconvenient of this mouse is the overall fit and finish of the outside of the case. Some edges are not perfectly smoothed out and thus the panel gap is not consistent and not smooth to the touch. The gaming performance is good and ties in well with the symmetrical design of the outer casing. The tracking is done well, in, many, in my case, on a textile mouse pad and while the high lift of distance is present, it will not be a bothersome in many cases. The accuracy is good although the mouse has some sort of built-in acceleration, but as I've said earlier, it will not prevent anyone from having a good gaming experience with this mouse. The ending question of this review is, would I recommend the Hero to anyone? Absolutely. For the right price, this mouse offers a great RGB system, a good driver and software packaging, and good switches and optical sensors, and I would gladly use this as my gaming backup mouse, given the opportunity.